what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Mike O'Meara, the head of New York State's police, has strongly criticized the media and the politicians for treating the police force like animals and thugs. Now, why would he make such a claim? Perhaps it's because they act exactly like animals and thugs. Check out what this sucker said in a press conference. Stop treating us like animals and thugs and start treating us with some respect. That's what we're here today to say. We've been left out of the conversation. We've been vilified. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Trying to make us embarrassed of our profession. Nobody talks about the police officers that were killed last week in the United States of America. And there were a number of them. Really? All last year, only 48 were killed. It is far more dangerous. Well, let me give you the numbers first. A thousand people, over a thousand, were killed. Citizens were killed by the police last year. 48 cops, over a thousand citizens. I would say that the cops got the advantage. I would say that it's pretty safe to be a cop compared to being a citizen. They always try to act like their job is really, really dangerous. Keep in mind, family, the police usually shows up 99% of the time when they show up. The crime has already been committed. You've already got knocked in your head or the person's already been murdered, assaulted, robbed, whatever, by the time they show up. So they're there just to take reports. That's what, they, that's what they're there for. They're showing up with guns and badges to take reports. Other times when they show up, they're actually causing the problems. They're actually like putting people in positions so that they could come out with some type of crime. For instance, you standing on the sidewalk, walking, minding your own business, whatever you're doing, driving along, whoop, they run up on you. What you doing? Where you going? Hey, what you talking about? All right, get out of the car. For what? Get out of the car. Then they start trying to put the handcuffs on you. Of course, you ain't did nothing. So who the hell just automatically let somebody cuff them? Wait a minute, man. What we, they, next thing, yo, boom, boom, bang, bang, boom, 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 boom. And then they beat the hell out of you and charge you with assault on a police officer and resisting arrest. That's the name of the game. So... He talked about them not being animals and thugs. Well, research says different. In 2019, taxpayers funded $68,688,423 as the cost of misconduct lawsuits, a 76% increase over the previous year, including about $10 million paid out to two exonerated individuals who had been falsely convicted and imprisoned. But that's not all. You know, Eric Garner was not the first chokehold victim for the New York Police Department. Back in 1983, they choked to death Michael Stewart. His crime, painting graffiti on a police precinct. Check out how they explained it. They said he became violent with the police, a graffiti artist. He became violent with the police and he took off running down the street and he collapsed and he died. That's the story. They had a sodomy charge of Abner Luima, shooting of Amadou Diallo, racial mailing of Thomas Pappas, 
shooting of Sean Bell, the shooting death of Timothy Stanbury. The NYPD has been accused of kidnapping drug dealers. They had a subway sodomy scandal. Retaliation against ex-officer Adrian Schoolcraft after he released audio evidence of corruption within the NYPD. Systematic issues of mass suicide within the NYPD. Say that again, just in case you find yourself in cuffs in New York City. Systematic issues of mass suicides within the NYPD. Beatings and killings of protesters. We're talking about nonviolent protesters. The NYPD has had thousands and thousands and thousands of victim misconduct allegations and controversies, including NYPD rape cop allegations, mafia cops. You got dudes that have been members of the mob. They're on the mob payroll and the NYPD payroll simultaneously. Gun smuggling scandals, ticket fixing scandals, rigging of evidence to secure convictions, you don't say. Muslim surveillance. They played this game called the arrest quota game where they would get points for making arrest. Let's not ever forget stop and frisk. In 2015, there was an investigation into cheating on the lieutenant's exam. They've been busted for planting marijuana. Major failure of oversight. On all levels, this is a corrupt police department, one of the most corrupt, not the only one. I'm actually describing many police forces all around America. This is what they do. It is a culture and the public does not trust them. You got a few slow pokes out there that don't know any better, but most people see it for what it is. They see these police forces all around America as a bunch of wild, uncivilized animals. This is what it is. The facts, they're documented. If you're constantly acting like animals and thugs, what are we supposed to conclude? Ironically, this is how they choose to describe many black people. So welcome to my world, sucker. Stop all that damn crying. It ain't manly. Suck it up, buttercup. No more talk. What the haters talking about?